friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a hyper mature morganian cataract the patient had an attack of faculitic glaucoma which was treated elsewhere the patient has come to me with this appearance there are pigments on the back surface of the cornea and over the anterior capsule i have taken up this case for surgery let us observe the surgical steps by this time the main incision and two side ports have been made and now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber and then tripan blue 0.06% dye is applied over the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble this is a little bit of adrenaline to keep the people dilated during surgery and now i wash the dye out and at this time most of the pigments that were sticking to the back surface of the cornea and over the anterior capsule came out and visibility became much better and now 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected into the anterior chamber and now is the time to do capsulorexis i take a 26 gauge bent needle and see what happens as i try to incise the anterior capsule head is you can see the whole lens moves and there is wrinkling of the anterior capsule means there is genular weakness so i have planned to do a small rexis so that if ctr is required i can easily put the ctr in the capsular bag if the rexis is large or if the rexis extends placement of ctr becomes very very difficult with this size of the rexis if ctr is required it will be easy to apply and now some more visco is injected into the anterior chamber and then the tip of the phaco handpiece is being introduced into the anterior chamber this is oatly cataracts 3 phaco machine and see how to hold a free floating nucleus without any epineucleus go bevel down occlude the teeth go into the substance of the nucleus move for a distance hold the nucleus very firmly reach near the opposite equator and then try to crack it like this and this is a very good crack so in free floating nucleus always go bevel down go into the substance of the hard nucleus move for some distance reach near the opposite equator and hold the nucleus very firmly and then try to crack it this is another good crack when there is genular weakness we cannot hurry up and we have to be extremely patient as well as we have to be 100% alert 100% alert any time genular dialysis can occur and we have to notice that very early and see as i emulsify this piece and then this small piece and then as i try to hold this piece i notice there is genular dialysis at 6 o'clock something is 
fluttering at six o'clock at the equator of the back yes that is genular dialysis still it is on the posterior part of the bag but if I don't take care at this stage it is going to be a disaster so I pause for a while I think what to do and then I decide to come out I hold the base of the cannula visco cannula and ask my assistant to inject visco stop irrigation and I come out my assistant keeps on injecting visco and then I inject some more visco 2% HPMC through the main incision and ask for a seat here a capsular tension ring and here is the capsular tension ring how to apply this I take a MacPherson's forceps in my right hand and a fixation forceps tooth curved fixation forceps in my left hand and with these two instruments I manipulate this CTR and place it in the capsular bag the leading end goes like this since the rexis is small and stained the capsule is stained I can very well see that the leading end has gone into the capsular bag and now I keep on advancing the CTR as I reach the opposite end I hold near the eyelet with the Macpherson's take a Sinsky hook in my left hand go through the sideboard use the eyelet of the CTR and with the help of the Sinsky hook I place it in the bag if it gets stuck we have to use a chopper to disengage and place the CTR in the bag and now I am relieved that the capsular bag is nicely supported and I ask for the FECO handpiece again the power FECO power used in this case is 80 percent flow rate is 35 ml per minute and vacuum is 350 millimeter of mercury because this posterior capsule there is a trampoline of the posterior capsule and I cannot use high vacuum so to be on the safer side I um, have decreased the vacuum I usually use 450 vacuum for surgeries in this case it is only 350 and now um, emulsifying the pieces only one piece has been emulsified and this is the second piece after this on the one heminucleus will be emulsified yes very slowly keeping an eye on the posterior capsule keeping an eye on the anterior chamber stability and with hundred percent alertness of mind I emulsify very slowly very gradually I keep the larger piece downward to support the posterior capsule and emulsify uh, the a small piece keeping the small piece at the iris plane and the larger piece supporting the posterior capsule and in the back and now this heminucleus is to be chopped again so I hold it firmly and chop it and this small nuclear fragment I keep above and the larger fragment below to support the posterior capsule and this smaller piece is very slowly very gradually emulsified 
friends we have to increase our skills don't wish it were easier wish you were better don't wish for less challenges wish for more skills this is a great quote of mr jim ron which i always keep in mind and now i don't want to emulsify this piece this last bit of nucleus already there is genular weakness so i want to use iol as scaffold and over the iol i will emulsify this piece and large the main own little bit just by 0.2 mm so that i can easily deliver the lens in the back and here it is this is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens these patients are uh, belong to poor socio economic category and they cannot afford hydrophobic intraocular lenses yes the lens has gone into the capsule bag the lens is dialed nicely yes now the piece is placed just in front of the just at the center and now i go again with the hand piece i will is very thin it is in the back at actually in the posterior part of the back and i am emulsifying this piece at the iris plane and there is no chance of posterior capsular rent when the i will is protecting the capsular back and this is 100% security for the capsular bag please always remember when there is genular weakness you always use i will scaffold for emulsifying the last piece and now the visco is nicely removed from the bag as well as from the anterior chamber with the help of bimanual irrigation aspiration nice visco cleaning is necessary to prevent post of arise of intraocular pressure and now this is bit of moxi now the side ports are hydrated side ports are closed by corneal stromal hydration and then the anterior chamber is formed by a 23g simco cannula and this is a final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is formed nicely and the case is concluded thank you very very much for your attention hope this video will inspire you to take up challenging cases hope this video will provide you necessary skills to do morganian cataracts thank you once again for your attention